How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews back with new brewery time up in this piece in the form of Dragon Mead Brewing. This is their final absolution. This is their Belgian style triple ale. Tis better to curse the darkness than to light thy hand on fire. This beer is awesome. Um, I've never heard of this brewery before, but I've heard of this brewery before. And by that, I mean every region of Beardom has a brewery like this. And it, when I say this, it might be me po sound like I'm poking fun at breweries like this. I am not. These are some of my favorite breweries, which is uber traditional old school brewery head guy. You know what I mean? They're like BJCP nerd. They were a home brewer, but they were, fell in love with Belgian beers. So they beer, brew beers like this. They typically have some kind of medieval kind of theme to them. Um, you know, uh, again, I'm, I know I'm kind of stereotyping here to a certain extent, but it's very, very true. We have these in and around my area. And this seems like what is the Michigan version of that. Now, everything I read to you um, at the get of this was pretty much what's on the label. There's no ABV on this beer. Um, but I had to know. So I wanted to do a little bit of research. So um, I decided to go to their website. And boy, is it a goddamn treat. Because... I'm blown away by this brewery. Like, I wish I lived by this place because I would probably hang out here and chug beer all the time. So, first things first, they have two locations. They have, like, their um, Dragon's Mead and Dragon's Landing. But I, I had to, like, research this to see if this is what's legitimately happening at this. And I know this is going to be a long-winded review, so I apologize. But they have, one, they have happy hour. Love it when a brewery has happy hour. I'm going to read off their beers real quick. I know this sucks for review status, but I'm going to read off their draft beers they have at the brewery. What seems like, unless I'm wrong, but it's from what I can ascertain, this is what they have on draft at the brewery right now. They have an American Red. They have a Bohemian Pilsner, an American IPA, American Fruited Wheat, a Coffee Stout, a American Amber, an American IPA, an American Imperial Stout, an American IPA, a Bitter Red, an American Full Body Blonde, a Cream Ale, New England IPA, Fruited Wheat, Hot Pepper Ale, an American Session IPA, American Fruited Wheat, and a Chocolate Stout. That's the American styles they have on draft. Then we get into the Belgian side of things. They have a Belgian quad, a Belgian white ale, a Belgian abbey ale, a Belgian style double, a Belgian triple, this beer right here, a Belgian pale ale, a uh, uh, final absolution hybrid, a uh, Belgian dark strong. Oh, we have to go to the English styles now. And they have an English bitter, an English style stout, an I Irish amber, an English style porter, an Irish style stout, a English pale ale, an English style brown, an English brown with honey, an English stout, an English style bitter, and an English brown porter. Let's skip to the German stuff they have on draft now. So you're talking about German honey wheat, German Kolsch, half of Eisen. Only three there. Only three Scottish beers, too. They have a Scotch Ale, because of course, they have a Scotch Ale, of course, and guess what? They also have a Scotch Ale, so three different fucking Scotch Ales. They have a Norwegian style beer section, there's nothing in there right now, so they have Norwegian style beers. A Russian Imperial Stout, um, and they have a Firkin Hand Pull, I assume that's like a Saturday thing, that's what these breweries typically do. And there's a special releases on draft too, there's a Belgian Dark Strong, a Scotch Ale, and a Belgian Dark Strong with bourbon syrup. I'm not going to count, but that's like 40 fucking beers or more on draft. I love this place. I want to visit it. That's insane. Just the logistics of producing that much beer is difficult. To produce that much beer and put it all on draft is just insanity. Like, pure, unadulterated insanity. So, this has to be good. There's no way you make those that many beers, and you exist for how long they have, because I didn't even look it up. But they have to be. I, I saw something about their, like, the oldest brewery in um, in the uh, in their area. Longest, oldest, award-winning brewery or something like that. So they've been around for a while, so if this beer is is not good i would be very very surprised label wise it's exactly what you think you'd get at like a renaissance fair or medieval times it looks like a belgian triple you know what i mean maybe a skosh darker than what i would expect but it looks like a belgian triple it has that little ring of kind of head on it just off white more like khaki nothing too crazy and just that rich kind of clear orange glow like i said it's just skosh darker than what i typically expect 
But again, I don't know the age on this bottle, nothing. There's even no ABV on it. But anyway, we're off to a fun little start here. Let's get a nose. Okay, Belgian triple. Sweet malts, a little bit of Belgian yeastiness, a little bit of soft banana phenolic on it. Um, not a big booze component, but I can tell it's a bigger beer. It's not as vibrant. It's not as vibrant from both the yeast aromatic and both a slightly sweet malt characteristic here. Comes off a little bit less sweet, comes off a little bit less banana -y kind of um, bubblegummy than I expect from a Belgian triple. Not that I want like a, a, a just smacked in the face with all that kind of stuff, but with this being 10%, I expect it to be a little bit bigger, bigger but it definitely smells the part of a genuine kind of legit level kind of a triple. Let's dive in. Cheers. So when I drink beers, that happens from time to time. I don't know if you guys know this. When I drink beers, every now and then, I'll talk about danger juice. And when I talk about Danger Juice, it basically says it's a beer that is super high in ABV, but drinks way smaller than that. And there's a lot of iterations of that, a lot of hazies, stouts, all that stuff. Belts and triples are kind of the OG status, like OG level Danger Juice. And this one definitely fills that role. You do get this nice kind of soft kind of banana thing. A little bit bigger than what's in the taste, but appropriate for a Belgian triple. I thought the model was kind of going to come off a little bit heavy. I thought the beer was going to come off a little bit heavy based off of the the look of the beer. No, it's not. It's it's probably maybe a skosh heavier than what I like, but it's definitely not a heavy beer. But you know you're drinking something of weight, you know, and that's kind of an oxymoron. It's not heavy, but, you you know, it's weight. You can tell you're drinking a Belgian triple. There's a, a viscosity and density to the, to, the drink, to the beer, even though it's not heavy. You know you're drinking something like that. It's got this nice sweet maltiness, kind of props up that kind of banana phenolic, makes you think you're drinking something a little bit kind of pastry in a Belgian sense, not in the American kind of beer sense. Perfectly carbonated, no off flavors on this whatsoever. I think it's quite nice. It's not going to be my favorite Belgian triple I've ever had. That's not in play here. But as far as American breweries making triples, this is pretty damn good stuff. You know? And it is quintessential danger juice like you you give a layman this beer cold and this is probably just a skosh warmer um than i typically drink my beers i'm probably up in the like the a spot on 50 or a little bit above this is somebody in like the mid to low 40s they probably drink this like a pilsner and then bad things happen <laughs> that's why it's danger juice i like this beer i'm not gonna sit here and gush over it saying it's my favorite trip of all time like i said but it's made epically well. It gives me what I want from a triple. If I drank this blind, I would assume this would, I would say this is from overseas. And that's probably the highest compliment I give this beer or really any American born kind of triple or any Belgian based beer is that you would think, you know, this is very authentic to what they're trying to do. That's why I say Belgian style triple. Because it's not being brewed over there. And a lot of times, more often than not, that tends to be the case more with um, uh, doubles and quads. Because, uh, uh, But it is the case, too, with triples. They, they tend to come off a little Americanized, maybe a little bit more hoppy. The yeast phenolic is just true to form. But that all is here, there. Uh, and uh, it's done in a very fun, very kind of envious way. Like, I want to go to this place so bad now. I want to go to this place for a weekend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, go there on a Thursday. Get there on a Thursday, drink for four or five hours, come back on Saturday, drink there for eight hours, and then go back on Sunday, drink for four or five hours. Because that's what I would need to do to get through the whole tap list, to be perfectly honest with you. Because those were not a lot of, like, not heavy hitters. And just, it tickles me pink. It warms every square inch of every cockle of every heart that I have. Um, the places like this exist, you know? You know, you look at this label, you look at this, you know, style of beer. This is not what moves the needle. It just isn't. It is for me. It is for people that kind of grew up with Belgian beer and, and loves it. And will always continue to love it and have the biggest soft spot in their heart for it. But it's just, it's just not hip. It's just not what the kids find cool. 
I guess I could say that's okay from a knee-jerk reaction. I'd be like, fine, more for me. But these are the breweries you want to... I, I shouldn't say we. I should talk in what I'm talking about because I shouldn't speak for y'all. These are the breweries I want to exist. Um, and, you know, if they can't keep their lights on, that's. I think that's I think that's a detriment to the beer culture. You know? Now that they're ripping out 40 beers and they have a tap room, two tap rooms, I'm sure they're doing fine. Um, but I'm talking about the bigger picture here and how brewers that love these kind of styles and really hang their hat on, on beers like this that, you know, they're the ones that fold more often than not, you know, and, um, to be able to have something like this from out of state, but it, it just bring me back to when I fell in love with beers, which was Belgian beer, you know, in the late nineties and then 97, 98, 99 is just what really kind of made me a beer junkie. It's fantastic. A fantastic journey. I appreciate it very much, Rick. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning. Rick sent this off. and It's really tasty beer. Let's get back to it real quick. Wrap this up because this is definitely the longest review I've done in a while. So what I notice, it gives you what you expect from a triple, just a bit more muted. And the taste, it gives you what you expect from a triple. Not all that muted. There's maybe a hair more bittering than what I remember classic triples giving me. And I want to put a little asterisk on that. Is that this beer is probably relatively fresh, being that it was came from Rick. And, and who knows? There's no date in the bottle. Can't really ascertain that. But, you know, a lot of times Belgian triples tend to take quite a bit longer to get here. So those hops tend to die down. Um, so, you know, your classic Belgian born, Euro born kind of triples, you know, they might be a year or two old before you actually get to them here. So that could be the variant here and just a really tasty beer. It, it, what this beer does not change anything for me. It does not make me rethink the rules when it comes to Belgian ales or anything like that. What it makes me want to do is visit this brewery and they will go on a short list. If I make it out that way and I'm relatively close to this brewery, I will sit there. I will hang out and I'll chug some beers because Beers that beers like these at places like these deserve to be chugged. So there you go. Is it one of the better triples I've had as of late? Yes. Um, even American or otherwise. Value and availability, no idea. Rick, please tell me what's what and leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like Belgian triples, who would have thunk it? Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massif if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of Belgian influence beer right now you should hope to see you next time cheers